This is the second video in the series how to build your own custom Leslie 145 using mechanical parts purchased online. In this video I'm going to show you how to fit the lower rotor and the loudspeaker as well as the motor. And the first thing to do is to turn the cabinet upside down to fit the lower rotor bottom bearing in place. And before you fit this in place it's a good idea to change the bearing. Bearings are available from popular online auction sites like most other things are. When I bought these bearing plates, they had bearings and the rubber grommet with them, but they weren't in very good condition, so from an eBay supplier, I bought a brand new set. There is a sequence of events to fitting the lower rotor. First of all, the wooden lower rotor goes in place. Then the shaft with the pulley is pushed down the center, supported on the rubber grommets, making sure that it fits into the rubber grommet in the bottom bearing plate. And before putting the top bearing cross plate in place, don't forget to fit the belt. The pulley and shaft that I'm using came from an old Rotasonic speaker, so it was a little bit too long for the Leslie 145. So using my lathe, I shortened the shaft and machined a spigot on the top to the same diameter as the rubber grommet. You will notice that I'm using a cable tie on the pulley to anchor it to the drum. The reason for this is just a safety precaution to stop the drum dropping. If you do use a cable tie like this, don't pull it tight. If you do, it will warp the pulley and the belt is likely to fall off. I wanted the facility to be able to use different loudspeakers in the cabinet if I needed to. For instance, a 12-inch speaker instead of a 15. Or a different brand of loudspeaker where the holes might not have been in the same place. So Ben at Castle Cases came up with the idea of mounting the loudspeaker on a special gasket ring. And then by using different gasket rings, I could fit different loudspeakers without drilling extra holes into the cabinet. The bolts are slightly over long. They have four washers on each bolt. But if I fit another speaker with a thicker rim, then I would need to use different bolts. So I thought I'd use the same bolts and just pack them out with washers. Fitting the motor is a very simple job. It's anchored at the back with a bolt with a metal sleeve on it through the rubber grommet. And at the front, it has a wing nut with a special washer and the whole thing runs in a slot which allows the motor to move to adjust the belt tension. Belt tension on a Leslie speaker lower rotor is critical. If the belt is too slack it will fall off. If it's too tight, when the rotor slows down it will slow down too quickly. The fundamental principle of these Leslie speakers is that the base rotor travels in the opposite direction to the treble rotor and slows down and speeds up at a different rate to the treble rotor. This is the first test of the lower rotor and it runs very quietly and it's very well balanced. In the next video in this series I will show how I fit the top horn and the treble driver. I will discuss the pros and cons of uprating the treble driver to a higher powered unit. There are many ways of modifying Leslie speakers but it is very difficult to get them to be any better than the originals. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been of some use to you.